Good morning, Christ Lutheran Church. Now at least I have my mic. Now I'm running back. I was just enjoying the music so much and dancing behind Jason, but he didn't see me. But the band was laughing. So it is great to have everyone here this morning. I have a few announcements. Um, I see LaVon Johnson is on this morning. Everyone wave to LaVon. This week, uh, we laid her husband, Ken, to rest at Fort Snelling. So give her an extra hug as she joins worship this morning. Also, you may notice Sarah Q is not here this morning or chatting with us all. She learned that her uncle David passed away. This is two uncles in too short a time span. Please send her your text messages and all. You'll also notice today... I don't even know how to announce this, but if I can announce Undy Sunday, I can announce that Andrew is going to be on video in his pajamas. That's right, in Sunday's cool, today is pajama day. So I hope you kids all have your pajamas on. If not, this gives you a chance between now and Sunday's cool to go and get your pajamas on so that Andrew's not the only one at church in his pajamas this morning. But we know he isn't because there's so many of you with your videos off, and we probably know why. You're still in your pajamas. Well, coming up next Saturday will be the Camp Anamia quilt auction that will be helping host through our broadcast system here at Christ Lutheran Church. We will send the link out for that for anyone who's interested in bidding on quilts to help outdoor ministry. 
Also, next week will be our Thanksgiving Christ the King Lutheran uh, worship thrown together next Sunday. And this Sunday, you probably are aware because you got a stewardship letter in the mail this week that our theme today is generosity, embracing our future. You'll also note big on our list, um, first kudos to our outreach team that helped Fair For All give food out this week in our parking lot. There was quite the line, which reminds us of all those in our community that are few, food insecure. I don't know if we have a total number on that. 168 households were served on Thursday. Fantastic to our outreach team and Fair for All for that ministry. But coming up is our Christmas basket gift and food drive. And our donations um, will be helping 52 families. All the info is on our Christ Lutheran Church website under baskets. Um, you can sign up to provide specific gifts or provide grocery cards. There's just a slew, something for everyone there that you can sign up. And if you're interested in delivering the baskets on Saturday, December 19th, please contact our outreach director, Susie Schultz, in the church office and she'll get you connected. So many announcements, so little time, and I even forgot my microphone as we began. So let's get started. Let us begin with our litany of thanks. Um, when I say, uh, uh, Lord, you are great, please respond with, we thank you, Lord. We are a blessed people, for you call us your children. We are marked and claimed by the cross forever. Lord, you are great. We thank you, Lord. You have searched each of us, Lord, and you know us. You know when we sit and when we stand. You know our thoughts even before a word is on our tongue, what we have done to deserve such love and blessing. Lord, you are great. We thank you, Lord. What you ask of us is to love one another and to care for one another as you have been generous and kind to each of us. You ask us to embrace each other with that same kind of love and generosity. You are a loving example and a loving teacher. Lord, you are great. We thank you, Lord. Jesus, hear our prayers this day that we keep our eyes on you, that we might live like you, be like you, and give like you. Now let us give thanks this day with our whole hearts, praising you for your steadfast love and faithfulness. Lord, you are great. We thank you, Lord. Now, great is our Lord sung for us. Worthy. 
to Tim and Cheryl Devine. Good morning. Good morning. When asked to talk about generosity this week, Cheryl and I discussed what we thought being generous really means to us. To us, it means giving a significant amount of what God has graced us with to help support those organizations that are closest to our hearts. Christ Lutheran Church is at the top of that list. As the verse taken from Matthew chapter six states, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. We need to recognize that our heart will be focused on that which we treasure. If we focus on gathering material items instead of what God would like us to focus our treasure on, that is where our heart will be. Moving our treasures from earthly desires to heavenly priorities of God is difficult as we have human failings. But if we recognize that all that we have is from God and he has a plan for each of us, we can learn and grow in our generosity through the glory of God. We have been blessed so much as a family. Our health, our kids, our granddaughter, we have been truly blessed. Through this COVID experience, we have also been fortunate to remain safe, healthy, and unemployed. We know not everyone has been this fortunate. During this time, it has become even more apparent that we need to increase our assistance to others. Those of us who are not experiencing financial insecurity from COVID need to be more generous, as Pastor Kent discussed in the letter you should have received last week. Unlike COVID, generosity can be contagious in a very good way. As we give to causes and help others, we feel good. The value of the treasures we give generously can grow immensely as they will mean more to the receiver than the giver. We may feel good briefly by giving to others, but the impact of our generosity to the receiver can be tenfold the impact we feel. Generosity abounds at Christ Lutheran Church. Our staff and pastors are amazing with their dedication and service to our Lord and all of us in the congregation. The fantastic volunteers at Christ Lutheran Church display another incredible, display another example of our, of incredible generosity of your time and talents to serve. And then there's you, our generous congregation. I promise not to make this a treasurer's talk, but as your church treasurer, I have to say that I'm amazed at your generosity. Your generous gifts to support the operations and ministry of Christ Lutheran Church are incredible and so appreciated. Thank you. In his first letter to Timothy, the Apostle Paul tells rich Christians that they must do good to be rich in good deeds and be generous and willing to share. These are great words to live by. Now Cheryl will lead us in prayer. Dear Lord, we are thankful for all of the blessings that you have given us. May we always be reminded how our gifts can be shared to make a difference in the lives of others, to make a difference in the ministry of Christ Lutheran Church. May your generosity shine abundantly. In God's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Tim and Cheryl. Your generosity in all the ways that you serve here at Christ Lutheran Church shines. We thank you for your service and witness in and among us. Let us just briefly join in a quick prayer before our next song uh, and on into our kids' video. Let us pray. God of abundance and generosity, we pray that in all things that we embrace our faith, our neighbor, and our future. We pray that you will open the door to our hearts. With faith, O oh God, help us to envision the lives that we have been called to live. With faith, lead us to places unknown, trusting in you. Let us walk by faith and not by sight, taking the next step, even if we can't see the whole staircase before us. And all God's people said, Amen. Now to lead us, Lord. Lead us to a place, guide us. 
dance with your grace Give us faith so we'll be saved And we sing a very light-hearted video. Wait, oh, they smell like America. Today's episode is about giving back and about how good can spread. I'm gonna need a bigger bag. Got too much good to give. You're not one of those people who say the world can't be changed. You. You believe that it's everybody's duty to give the world a reason to dance, right? We have a whole world to make more awesome. People, we need you. We really need you. Kids, people used to be kids. Everybody. But how, Key President? Everything's terrible. Hey, quiet you. I know, sometimes things can look pretty dark. But there's always light. Light is always still there. In fact, let me show you how good spreads. Yeah, this is my baby right here. Okay, I, I need you guys to listen up. This is how good spreads. Let's read. How does good spread? Can we make the world brighter? Can we together make somebody's load lighter? Some people think good only spreads if you have lots of money. Or a nonprofit who makes a cool video that's slick and really funny. Burp. Does good only spread when you have the right hashtag, or the right bracelet, or t-shirt, or give out free tote bags? Does good happen by accident, just out of the blue? Does good only spread when Beyonce allows it to? Queen Bee? She's pretty powerful, but wow, 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 so are you. The world's only seen a glimpse of what you can do. Your heart is so big, but you might feel so small. I'm telling you now, you're thinking as a flaw. <laughs> good spreads when good is spread. And that's totally how you live. You share and you love, and you give and give and give. If someone needs lifting, you send them a rope. Your little whispers of love sends out huge gusts of hope. I know what you're thinking. That's a nice little story you're reading, Kid President. But what about me? You wanna know how you can make good things spread in the world? Show up. Show up in the world, you'll be a light. You'll see work to be done on your left and your right. So how will you show up? How will you make things brighter? By loving the people next to you. And making your loads lighter. Anger is contagious. Hate and fear, they are too. But I'm not here to spread those. <laughs> and neither are you. 
We're here to spread hope and make the world dance. Open your eyes and your heart and we might stand a chance. Get out of your comfort zone and get out of your head. Get to loving people and good can't help but be spread. Good morning, Christ Lutheran Church. Oh my goodness, I am so glad to see you today, even if I'm in my pajamas. Oh my goodness. Wasn't that video from Kid President awesome? Um, I don't know that I can really follow it up with too much of a children's sermon, but I do want to say this. I want you to remember what happens when you take just a small pebble in your hand and you are sitting by a small pond and you just drop it or toss it into the water. What, what happens when you do that? Well, the pebble goes into the water. And you know this. Ripples start to spread out from that pebble. Even this tiny little piece of rock makes this huge ring in this still pond. So I want you to think of generosity of giving yourself as dropping a pebble in a small pond. A little bit can make, go a very long way and make a huge change in our world, just like Kid President was saying. Will you please pray with me? Dear God, thank you for giving us full hearts to share with others. Help us to be generous with our time and with our gifts. In your name we pray, amen. All right, I'll see you in two minutes in Sunday school. And we now go to our first reader, Tyler Anderson. Good morning. Today's first reading is Psalm 112. Praise the Lord. Happy are those who fear the Lord, who greatly delight in his commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in their houses and their righteousness endures forever. They rise in the darkness as a light for the upright. They are gracious, merciful, and righteous. It is well with those who deal generously and lend, who conduct their affairs with justice. For the righteous will never be moved. They will be remembered forever. They are not afraid of evil tidings. Their hearts are firm, secure in the Lord. Their hearts are steady. They will not be afraid. In the end, they will look in triumph on their foes. They have distributed freely. They have given to the poor, their righteousness endures forever. Their horn is exalted in honor. The wicked see it and are angry. They gnash their teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked comes to nothing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's gospel comes from Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. Jesus said to the disciples, For it is if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, and to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing his five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You've been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow 
and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the 10 talents. For to all those who have more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, Christ Lutheran Church. I want you to think with me for a moment about invitations. Think of the last time you received an invitation to an event. Who was it from? What was it for? I remember as a kid excitedly coordinating birthday party invitations with the party decorations. I remember taking time to carefully construct the wording and then handwriting out the specifics of the date and the time and the location. Well, handwriting has pretty much evolved to Facebook events or other virtual invites to drive-by birthday parties or Zoom celebrations. And even though the way invitations are delivered has changed, there is one thing that remains. With each invitation we receive, we have a decision to make. We must decide, will we participate? How will we participate? If we choose to engage, do we do so joyfully or feeling out of obligation? And what sorts of invitations, maybe as you think about this idea, get you excited? Which ones maybe do you even dread? Today's parable offers an invitation, not to a birthday party or a wedding, but an invitation to how we must live. Yet I think it's hard to experience the invitation or determine whether or not we want to participate because the invitation comes alongside many sticking points in this parable. I think it's important to name some of those sticking points first, and then that helps us see what is Jesus' actual invitation to us. So one of the first sticking points is language. The language of master and slave in this parable is morally problematic. Maybe up to one-third of the population at that time in the Roman Empire was enslaved. So we can maybe understand the social world behind the parable. But in 2020, it's not a helpful image of what it means to belong to God. Because those aspects still grate against our values and our sensibilities. And there's the other sticking point of the severe final punishment a judgment and a banishment from the community into outer darkness. Yet as we continue this morning, we might see it as our own doing rather than something that God does simply by denying the invitation. I think one of the last major sticking points is that monetary transactional symbolism. The idea that those who make more get more we must not adopt that storyline, which gives some sort of divine approval that ingenuity is the cause of all economic growth, while those who endure some sort of stagnation must simply be lazy. The message of this parable is not invest, grow, and succeed. But these are sticking points that could lead us to have urges to reject or want to rewrite the parable. But in doing so, we sail right past Jesus' invitation and urgent message to how we must live. So what is that message? How are we to live? Well, it's an invitation into shared joy, self-giving and sharing the joy of discipleship, that when we give everything we have to follow Jesus, our joy exponentially grows. 
It's an invitation to acknowledge the superabundance that God has given. One talent in this parable is equivalent to about 10 years or more worth of wages for a typical worker in Jesus' society. We're talking about a little under a million dollars in today's gold prices for just one of those talents. But it's not about the money. It's about the extravagant abundance given to absolutely everyone. And what's more is that the abundance is entrusted to us over a long period of time. There's a key indicator in the parable that tells us that the man, Jesus, is going on a journey and after a long time returns. With that man on a journey being Jesus, it's his second coming that we are awaiting. And right now, we are living in that long period of time, God's kingdom here on earth. We're experiencing the gift of time, allowing us to live faithfully in this super abundance. So what if Upon receiving this invitation, we deny or refuse to participate in God's abundance. Well, the end of the parable with that third servant makes us squirm. For this is not the character of Jesus that we know, one who implores images of violence, punishment, and exclusion. Which is why I think it's more about our response than Jesus' response. In neglecting to bring the valuable talent into the public, the problem is that there's opportunity to further Jesus' work in the world has been squandered. A gift has been disregarded and taken for granted. In burying the gold, that third servant refused responsibility, not just the responsibility to do what he or she is told, but the responsibility to further God's intentions in the world. When we hide or bury the witness of God's abundance, perhaps we are punishing ourselves to a place and a life that is void of joy, that only knows darkness, wailing, or gnashing of teeth a reality that we ourselves created by refusing to participate in God's invitation of abundance. So I ask you, which servant might you identify with right now, knowing that next month or even next year you might think differently? And I don't ask you to think about this in order that you might judge or condemn yourself. That's never helpful. But self-reflection and assessing are helpful. And an approach of curiosity can be enlightening. Another question I want you to consider, and I actually want you to type this into our chat this morning, is how are you giving witness to God's abundance? How are you giving witness to God's abundance? What can you do this week to participate in God's invitation? Please type that into the chat. I'd like to lift up those in just a moment because maybe it is hard amid COVID exhaustion, Zoom fatigue, election hangovers to see God's abundance. But God's abundance never dissipates. Think of abundance beyond just material wealth and possessions. Think of the abundance of love, patience, justice, perseverance, understanding, the abundance of forgiveness, abundance of smiles, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness that we can all pour out. So I'm gonna go here to our chat to see what our community is talking about for abundance. Oh, you're not putting anything in there yet. (laughs) Keep thinking. Keep wondering. Being positive. Love it, Keith Finkelson. Oh, Lily, as a child, is saying our, our baby needed a new Christmas stocking, so my family and I are making her a Christmas stocking. Right, An abundance of love for a new sibling. Bringing communion to shut-ins. There we go. I love it. Keep them rolling in. 
trying to be more patient and kind to one another. Smiling with eyes behind masks, that's right, our smizing that we can all abundantly do. Participating in the Christmas baskets and the family promise meal. There are so many ways that we can participate in God's invitation of abundance. And as we know, today's theme is generosity, embracing our future. And it does highlight the need for financial generosity that is necessary to participate in God's mission in the world. And it's part of God's abundance, but it's not the only part of God's abundance. Like the three servants in the parable, we are all given abundance, a plethora, an extravagant amount of God. And like the three servants, we get to choose if we participate in God's invitation of abundance and to share it with others, or if we keep it to ourselves, choosing fear rather than faith, or scarcity rather than joy. As we near the end of Christ Lutheran's budget cycle, and our church council is diligently working on a budget for next year, There are many who ask, so where are we at, at least in our finances? I say if you're looking for those exact numbers, connect with Tim Devaney, our treasurer, Nancy Boxrud, our council president, or Pastor Kent. But I do know that where we sit right now is not all that uncommon with where we have found ourselves in past Novembers behind both in our giving and our spending in the budget that we passed, as well as faithful in our response to give. Yes, in other years, we would have multiple in-person gatherings for Advent and Christmas celebrations. Yes, this year is different due to many of the unknowns of our pandemic reality. Yes, it's super challenging to plan a budget for a new year when we know people are struggling to make ends meet. Yes, it might be tempting to grasp onto God's abundance, hold it tight and bury it. But just moments ago in your chatting, and hopefully that has continued, that you have shared how we all can give witness and participate in God's invitation of abundance. May we all continue to encourage one another in this abundant generosity that God gifts to each of us. Because here at the end of another abundant parable and the end of his public ministry, this parable of the talents, Jesus unveils his plan for blessing those who are poor in spirit, those who mourn, those who are meek, to continue in long-term faithfulness, a faithfulness that does more than confess Jesus as Lord. It is a trust and a faith in the joy of abundance and discipleship. So my sisters and brothers in Christ, dig deep. Avail yourself to opportunities to grow in your faith in your knowledge, and in your own spiritual practices. Participate and encourage one another in God's invitation to live out God's abundance in our world. Amen. shadow in your presence no more man would dare to stand before your throne before the holy one of heaven it's only by your blood and it's only through
shadow in your presence No more man would dare to stand before your throne Christ Lutheran Church are just blessed with the offering of music that our, uh, our musicians bring to us. Thank you to Susie and Sue and Linda and Chris and Jason for their leadership. It just doesn't happen. They gather every Wednesday um, for rehearsals and preparation. And then again on Sunday mornings, they get here really early to uh, make sure everything's just right for broadcast on Sundays. But let us gather in prayer in lifting up our offerings. Our response is, hear our prayer. O oh God, as we work in your kingdom, help us to find joy in our service and in our giving. Let us be free to set others free from what burdens them. For we are to be servants to one another, sharing what we have, whatever the cost or consequence let your light shine through our words and deeds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we follow you, Lord, guide our discipleship. As we seek to live humbly and walk with you, let us always choose the path that leads to living a generous life, allowing the Holy Spirit to set a holy flame within us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are in need, for all students from preschool to college, for teachers, staff, and administration. Oh God, you are our great physician. Watch over all who provide medical care. Be with the sick, especially the thousands who each day are contracting the coronavirus. Prepare a vaccine to save our world from COVID. Give food, employment, and housing to the countless who are struggling in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting God and the giver of all good gifts, you have blessed us and our congregation abundantly. Grant us the hope to dream and the courage to live into our possibilities. Make us faithful givers, both for the providing of our necessities and for the relief of those who are in need. Bless the gifts we offer to you, for the building up of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, gather us as one and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And before we run into this closing song and blessing, I know tomorrow I'll get a full report from Richard Johnson as to whether I said the Lord's Prayer too fast or just right today. Thank you, Richard Johnson. See you Monday. Now, let us go to our sending song, Open the Eyes of My Heart.
Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. A reminder that one of the ways that we can stay connected is staying on after the blessing because we have breakout rooms again this Sunday. They've been getting smaller and smaller, and we invite you this Sunday to stay on because we like to connect with you and connect with each other. So please do stay on after the blessing. Receive the blessing. Lord, we are your church. Pour out your power and love upon each of us that we might see each other and the world through your eyes. As we serve you with generous hearts, we trust you will turn the ordinary into the extraordinary. For with you, all things are possible. Now, let the, God, the people of God say, Amen! Amen! Amen.